Alrighty, well, good afternoon, everybody. Well, um, you know, I'm currently working on my Final Fantasy XIV blog post. So, once again, I'm kind of at a snag where, uh, where I want to talk about something in my blog, but to do that, or let me back up a bit, uh, in order to save me a ton of time having to type out these walls of text and all this other stuff, and since I currently have the game open right now, uh, I figured... Why not just go ahead and do a video about it and just actually show you rather than tell you? But, but yeah, so kind of a kind of a time saver here. Um, something else I was wanting to say. Oh yeah, and, uh, like usual, I'm gonna have some music running in the background. Um, titles. Oh god, what a mouthful. So this is gonna be uh, Teeth of Glass. Um, I Verdi Oki Della Dia Vampira. Um, this is a uh, and Frank, I can't even read that. Frank Alcadorius. But yeah, this is um. How can I put it? It's it's from Italy. It's Italian. Um. To say, for, I'll just go ahead and call it Italian dungeon synth. But yeah, it's got its um, uh, it's got kind of its own unique flair to it. So let me go ahead and fire that up. Okay, so. What a lot of time. But let me, um. Let me pick up my income. Let me look up my win loss here. Okay. So, I actually did do a video on this, um, like about a week ago. But it was, uh, it was just one part of a whole video. Um, so after playing this team for a while, I thought it would be more appropriate to just go ahead and do a full blown video. Uh, uh, de dedicated to this team and that team is going to be um is going to be uh, my Zolgoth team uh, for those that don't know I think about a week ago I managed to uh, I managed to acquire this acquire this troop arguably the most powerful troop in the game so and then um after playing this for a while I'm I've been saying it throughout, throughout the streams and stuff. Just oh my god, however did I get by without them? It's like it makes the game almost too easy. I mean, not I mean, like a lot of my other teams, it's not 100% perfect. But let me out. But kind of because of that, I, I kind of feel a need to explain the whole process involved in actually acquiring this troop. And um. This is kind of in it's kind of parallels with say in Final Fantasy XIV, like the I think they're called the extreme raids, uh, mythic raids, savage raids. I don't know what the top tier raids are called these days, but you know, pic, you know, picture that picture that kind of gear that you guys get from the from the top tier raids that you guys are doing. You know, the highest difficulty possible, the kind of the kind of rewards you get from doing those. You know. You know the best gear in the game. Well, Zulgoth kind of works like this as well. It's pretty much the same thing. And I guess since I'm here, I'll hopefully I'll remember to talk more about it as I do some demo runs. But I have gem masteries doesn't matter that much. Uh, impervious, immune to everything except curse. Oh, side note. I'm hoping to talk more about this later, but also I do need a. I also do. I hate using this word because it's so trendy. Shout out. I really kind of need to give a shout out to DJ Screw. He's um. He's been on my um. Uh, he's been uh, helping me almost since the beginning, or at the very least, ever since I started streaming this game, which I think I started at least six months ago. So he's been helping me ever since. So without his help, I probably, I probably never would have gotten this guy. I probably wouldn't have gotten close. Hell, I probably wouldn't be playing this game if not for him. So, so anyway, um, kind of back on subject. Impervious, and then kind of a side note. Uh, apparently, uh, yeah, this is the this is the wrong trait. I'm. I guess since I'm here, um, the other trait, um, invulnerable, it means you're in, immune to everything, including curse. Well, apparently, um, 
on Xbox, that's not the case. You can you can curse invulnerable troops on an Xbox, but on my PC, nope. You can still curse an impervious one, but uh, like like I said, the invulnerable ones, you can't curse them on on PC. But anyway, um, game five, all skill points doesn't matter much because most everything he has are flat numbers. It's only really going to matter for maybe for armor and life. But the big one, uh, kill an enemy, no matter um, no matter what his health is, this is probably this is probably the biggest reason why he's the most powerful troop in the game. Kills an enemy, no matter what he is. Um, only invulnerable troops are immune to this, and to a lesser extent, to a lesser extent, stealthy, because Zolgoth can't target them. Um, also, it uh, it ignores shields as well. You know, from uh, the betrayed name escapes me. Um, I just had a memory failure. But yeah, but it, it, it even uh, it even bypasses shields, so that's the other big thing. Rock solid, that's it. So yeah, and it also um, it burns and freezes all remaining enemies, and then creating twelve skulls. Um, so, but I'll talk more on this later. Um, what I really want to talk about though is um, is just the big, uh, for lack of a better word, journey you have to go through to be able to craft this guy. So, I mean, eight, eight orbs of power. Probably down here at the bottom. So, to craft, and remember, you need eight of these in order to make a Zolgoth. And each orb of power requires probably the hardest one to get is the major orb of ascension. You need three of them. Um, I'll need, I'll need a kind of, so kind of a tutorial on how orbs work in this game. You'll get them from uh, various events, like um, I don't, mm, yeah, I don't think you get any from Guild Wars, uh pretty much anything with rewards any event that has rewards yeah you get an orb of chaos uh, and you get another orb of chaos two orbs and you and then you get a major orb of chaos but anyway um you'll get these from uh, various events um you can buy you can pay for them with real money although uh uh you know, ten bucks for this, and um, and these are random, with few exceptions. Um, I think at least 90, 95 percent of uh, the orbs you come across are going to be major orbs of chaos, meaning you have to click them, and you'll get something random. So <laughs> you can you can kind of think of them as loot balls. No, not, but you know, kind of like loot boxes, kind of like loot balls. Because what you get out of here is totally random. And I wonder if it'll... Nope. I wonder if there's a way... You, I know you can do it on, uh, on treasure chest. It'll actually pop up the percentage. I don't want to go too in-depth. Yeah, here we are. Like drop rates. I wish they had it for orbs. But again, um... To, so getting back to where I was. So um, getting the orbs of ascension, you need four of them just to make one. And orbs of ascension are very rare. Well, maybe. Nope. I wish it did. But you know, same thing here. You actually need 20 of them to make just one of these. 
But, uh, but as you probably surmise from this, orbs are, are pretty hard to come by. You know, orb of growth, uh, and orb of wisdom, you'll get those, you'll get those, you'll get those, uh, of the three, you'll get these two the most often. Again, ascension, you'll get these, like, really rarely. And again, all this here is just for one single orb of power. In which, again, you need eight of them. So, there's a very long process involved just in getting this guy. But again, I, I just kind of feel I need to, need to mention this. Anyway, um, orbs, you, and I'm pretty sure you can, um, you can get them from the shop here. But again, you're having to pay real money for this. Yeah, I'm not seeing any orbs here. either so but but once again I'm um, sorry to sound like a broken record but there is a super long process involved in, in crafting soul goth so um, it probably took me at least at least six months to get all the mats necessary to be able to craft one. and once again and I'm sure for most other people not everybody's gonna have a DJ screw in their corner helping them out so, for people like them, it's probably going to take even longer, if at all. But anyway, um, but like I said, I, I just felt, felt the need to bring that up. Because, once again, it's... Basically, the game suddenly became a whole lot easier with this guy. But anyway, let me explain the team. The team that uh, DJ Screw suggested for me. Um, there's that. There's Centurion. Now, I just remembered. I did see a uh, uh, legendary content creator, Genki Call. I think I did see her uh, use this kind of team. But this was like a long time ago. I don't... I don't think I was uh, streaming this game at that at that time, but again, traits don't really care much. Maybe maybe wild magic. Ten percent chance to devour random mentally. Um, yeah. For every additional wild card on the board when you cast this, is an additional ten percent chance. Then you're converting all skulls to wild cards. And I'll explain a bit more on how wild cards work when we uh, get when I get in and do the demos. And then we got all time classics here, you know, Mountain Crusher, Elementalist, you know, another all time classic right here. And then ah yes, and uh, and here's the own here's the uh. The, pretty much the only place where you can consistently get orbs are gnome bugs. But um you only consistently get these during gnome weekend, which is which is what happened during uh, this last weekend. Um I think uh gnome weekends only occur like every few months or so I think. But since I still got some keys left over from that weekend, I'll go ahead and uh Go ahead and show a demo, and I need a quick. Oh, in case I didn't say at the start of this video, um, I'm kind of doing this by the seat of my pants. Just um, 
again, I was at a point in my blog where I I wanted to make a video about this uh, new team that I wanted to talk about in my blog, which is it's easier to talk it out than it is to type it out. But anyway, let me um I'll get this started. Alright, so oh also my um I've been having uh controller problems as of lately, so because of that, I won't be able to use my controller. So I gotta I gotta use my mouse for everything. So but, but again. Classic ability there will blow the board. Now, assume for a moment that these skulls are wild cards. So, the way a wild card works is uh, you can match them with any color, and I think uh, it's either it's either the uh, the wild card itself or the entire match. I'm thinking the whole entire match is gonna be doubled. It's gonna get you double mana. Um, does that stack with multiple wild cards? Um, I'm not real sure on that, but maybe we're about to find out through here. But in case I forget to say later, um, you can also you can also uh, match multiple. You can all uh, certain way I wanted to say this. You can also get uh multicolored matches. Um, I can't really see any here. Yeah. But anyway, let me uh, go ahead and cast this. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and slow that down a little bit. Just... We'll save three. Cedric would have been debuffed because otherwise, since I'm here, this is one weakness that Zolgoth has. Stealthy. I can't target him. I have to stun him first in order to target him, but as you can see here, he's not debuffed. So, I'm gonna have to pick somebody else. And then, when it comes to targeting, by default, I usually unless, uh, unless there's a higher priority target, I just target the guy at the very bottom. I want to leave the guy up on the top, especially if he's entangled, because after I cast this, Zogov is going to pop out a whole bunch of skulls, and hopefully some of those skulls are going to start damaging the top guy. So, so yeah, it's more efficient to just get the guy on the bottom. And again, it also, um, it burns and freezes all remaining enemies. Burning, at least as of right now with the team I got, doesn't matter that much. It, um, it does keep them from, uh, it does keep their sh any shields they might have from working. Like I said, I forget the name. Barrier, that's it. But burning enemies, I think it keeps Barrier from working on them because they take two dam or three damage every turn. Freezing, however, is a big one. So it's freezing the entire the entire team. So. And then creating 12 skulls. So again, this is why I usually use this on the person on the bottom, because the person on the top is already going to take be taking a whole bunch of skull damage. I'm scanning for something. Here we go. So we gotta we're gonna have a monster of a match here. After I cast Centurion, cause Cause he's um You know we got a green five match here. 
And I think this here is also going to result in a, another green match. So, but like I said, you can uh, you can you can match multiple colors with these wild cards. So. Ah, yes, and looks like Devour one. Looks like Devour one off too. Um, there we go. He's debuffed. Now I can target him. And as you saw there. The uh, extra skull damage killed the guy on the top, and ta-da! So let's go ahead and try another. But like I said, it, it, you wonder how you ever got by without him. Man, I might. Yeah, I can't do it here. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and I'll fire up another one. So let me um, I'm gonna go ahead and set the speed. Back to normal. Okay. Um, so yeah, we'll have to fire that up. Perfect example right here. I'll get so like I said a few moments ago. Assume this is a wild card. What he's, what you're gonna get here, is he's gonna get a brown three match and a a, a red three match. Because again, you can match multiple colors with this. Same thing here. You're gonna get a. You're gonna at least get a purple three match. Let's check itself. And you're also gonna get a. You're also going to get a brown five match out of this. So, yeah. Very powerful troop right here. And and then, in case I didn't say, the Skull City, the Zolgoth crates, Centurion's, or Centurion, Centurion's going to use. So. And hey! Cedric's debuff, so. Out you go, buddy. Again, we got a we got a brown five match plus whatever other matches that we got over here and we got a purple three I guess a, a brown three but you the, the possibilities with center center got are almost endless as long as you got some skulls on the board and then In case I didn't say, I you try to avoid it. You try to avoid hitting the guy on the top, especially if he's especially if he's entangled. You want to keep the entangled guy up there, because one drawback to this team, um, kind of like the Skull Falls team that uh, did a video on some time ago. This is not a very tanky team. This is basically a glass cannon, glass cannon team, because about all you're gonna get out of him. It's just um uh, it's just a barrier. So it's gonna absorb one hit and that's it. He's not a You gotta you gotta hope. You gotta hope that uh if he dies, you gotta hope that Centurion can devour somebody. Because he's gonna need it, especially in PvP. And then again, we have a we have a wild card up, so it's now going to be a 20% chance that he's going to devour the uh, gnome down there. Nope. So now it's going to be a 30% 30% chance. Nope. So I'm gonna. So I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a PvP run. Okay, so this is one of the this is one of the weaknesses right here that this old team has. Um, 
Tell you what, let's try casual. I get it. Yep, and here's... Again, the biggest weakness, one of Zolgoth's big weaknesses is stealth. Especially when you have a troop like a Rachnian Weaver. He can web everybody. He deals true damage to the last two. 74 health. 77. So, they're gonna... So... They're only gonna be able to absorb two... They're only, they're only gonna be able to take two hits from the Weaver. And then they go bye-bye. And then on top of that, again, Weaver is stealthy. Zolgoth can't target him. And on top of that, he's impervious. He's immune to stun, meaning I can't stun the stealth off of him. So that basically means I have to hit him. I can only target him last. Trick and treat. Um. So this guy's a monk. I don't know if, if, uh, if stealth is one of the positive status effects. I don't, I don't think monks have stealth. Well, they got rock solid. But if the if the class was Orb Weaver, um, I'd definitely not have used the Zolt team. But basically, if he gets his ability off, yeah, you're going to have a tough time. So for something like this, I probably would have done the Rock Band or something. Oh, and... Uh, I also want to mention there's also a there's like a, a gold grabber version. Um, I I think I actually did a video on this too. Uh, it's like a gold team. Deal. And uh, kind of works like Egg Thief. Destroy five random gems. So, but yeah, this team this team would have a very tough time against a team like this with Arachne and Weaver. Um, Cause there's also a, another certain team. Okay, the game's gonna freeze up momentarily. It always does this. I got my windows messed up. There we go. Perfect. Um, and I would most certainly uh, bypass this kind of team as well. This is a team that's going to overwhelm you with skull damage. Uh, for something like this. Basically, Web Spinner deals triple damage. I think my hero is immune to poison, but not Web. So... And, uh, it inflicts web and then deal and then uh, deals the skull damage afterwards so basically web spinner deals triple triple skull damage uh three great worms basically creating six skulls every turn for a situation like this come on rock solid isn't really gonna cut it it might be able to stop the first skull attack but it's not gonna it's not going to stop every subsequent skull attack. And 60, 85, yeah, it's not going to last long. So this is this is one of those situations where I would have brought in my rock band instead. 78, 106, and including rock solid. So he's going to be a bit tougher. He's going to be able to take more hits. King Heliodor, kind of the same thing. And they got Stone Skin reduced, you know, so this would have been better suited. Horses for courses. But otherwise, I don't know about the one with, uh, oh, okay. Create six calls. Okay. be able to do this one though. Bad match right there. It's 
Solgoth does use purple. Uh, not much else, though. Here's open. Nope. situation here um again unless there's a major pressing need to uh, like i have to take out a certain troop i'll also go after whichever troop is fully charged up just to stop him from casting his ability that case being this cobalt team wand out he goes and it just froze everybody else so just made the battle a bit easier i got a brown four match And then, Yowie Gowie, he's some pretty serious bad news, so he gots to go. And not to mention, too, he's not entangled. So, I want to keep these two, keep these two entangled guys up, up as long as possible. Those. Might be enough to charge him up. Hey, the bottom too. Got lucky there, so. <laughs> and once again, this would be another team that uh I would steer clear from. Or maybe less so. Yeah, this is like a, this is basically an anti-green team here. So it's gonna deal a uh, double damage with skulls. So, but yeah, I probably steer clear from this one because, like I said, he's not much of a tank. He's more tanky than um than my skull falls team. But uh, against a uh, skull-based team like this, he's only going to be able to absorb one, maybe two hits. I guess it's in here. I, I want to do this really quick. Wrath, on the other hand, he is no tank. He can reflect 25% skull damage, but the thing of it is, is he has to take the damage first. So, not a prayer against this team. Again, he... Probably dead. Probably dead in one hit. Let me look. Yeah, 63. Uh, Room priest. So it's probably gonna be my last battle here because I really need to get back on my blog post. I think I went over long on this. Got shut down. Very valuable. This means her royal honey got shut down. And Vinoxio. Oh, got a red three here. A blue. Uh, blue three. Blue three, and I'm guessing a uh, yellow three, but nobody uses yellow on this team. Um, he only needs one more point. I'll go ahead and just um, hit I'll crush her. There we go. Ding. I'm going to 
target the hero at the top because he's not entangled, and that's something else to factor in too. Ah, uh, the class and weapon, the class and weapon of your opponent. So, like, if your opponent is say uh, a sun spear, or let's say, oh come on, a uh, sun spear with rope dart. Yeah, that's got to, uh, yeah, that's high priority. If your opponent is say an orb weaver that uses life and death, and you manage to actually debuff him, or specifically you manage to stun him, yeah, that's the guy you go after. So, so. <coughs> Out you go, buddy. Um, so, so we got a blue five match, uh, brown five match. Oh yeah. We all cast that again. And then... Bye bye, Queenie. Uh, red four match. And also remember too that, uh... You're getting, uh... You're getting double mana from all these matches you're making with wild cards. Now... Too late to check now, but, uh... I don't know if the uh, wild card stack, like, do you get, if you had two wild cards here, do you get four times the mana? But even even then, I mean, just having the double mana, having, even if it only stacked, or even if it didn't stack, or if it only applied once, that's still pretty damn good. So. Yeah, like, would you get, um, Would you get 24 purple mana on this? Actually, it's a good way to find out. I only got 32. I did find this kind of interesting too. Uh, instantly killing an enemy, the way they coded it, it actually it actually counts as spell damage. Like it's not a it's not an it's not a effect per se. It's just hang on. The trackball on my mouse is sticking. But it's it's just um it's actual damage. So, alrighty, well, uh, that's going to do it for me, everybody. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and call it good here. Once again, I need to get back going on my blog post, and I need to get this video uh, uploaded and processed and all that other good stuff. So, so yeah, and yeah, I yeah, I went over long, 38 minutes. I was hoping this to be 15, 30 minutes tops, but nope, didn't happen that way. So, but as the old saying goes, shit happens. But otherwise, um, thanks for thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate that, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.